Hey, everybody. Welcome to the 10 Points Pacers team preview. 10 points over the next 30 minutes. That's what we're doing here. Allie LaForce alongside former NBA and Big Ten stars Steve Smith and Derek Harper. We're going to take a good look at the Pacers, and it brings us to our first question, which is, are they now, with the departure of LeBron James from the Cavaliers, a top four team in the East, guys? I think so, Hart. <laughs> I look at it. Uh, I'm really impressed with Nate McMillan has done because watching him and the way he played, you, you, you coached the way you played. He did that at the beginning of his career mm-hmm. coaching. It was grinded out. It was defense. But I think he did a good job of opening up the basketball, being able to put guys in great positions. He opened up the floor. He had Old Depot had one of his best years. So I'm going to say, yeah, I have them third, Hart. <laughs> third? Guys in third, so I'm going to hear what you have to say now. Let's I don't see. have them third, and okay. I, the reason why I don't is because I don't think they have a legit second score. Okay. I, I think it could fluctuate a lot of different ways when you start talking about after Oladipo, who's going to get you buckets. My thing is that if you look at their team, the balance is good. They have six guys in double figures. Mm-hmm. You know, Bogdanovich was the second leading scorer last year, really had some great moments mm-hmm. in the playoffs against, uh, against Cleveland, but consistently, who's going to be the guy that puts the ball in the hole for you when, when you need buckets outside of Oladipo? Now, that was the problem in the postseason was Oladipo really was carrying the load, which, bring, which brings us to our second point. You know, we look at how he seemingly just wore down over the course of last season, especially in the second half. His offensive rating and shooting went down drastically. The fifth-year pro had the ball in his hand a lot. He, he was really carrying the load. I, he led the team in points, rebounds, assists, usage percentage, defensive right. rating. I mean, he really did the whole thing. So um, do the Pacers need to reduce his workload, or is it more about him just getting used to it? See, I think he was new to the game. And what I mean by that is he's never carried a team before in his career. He's always had a support system around him. He's been the second, third scorer on a lot of teams. But when you look at what he had to do last year, I mean, they asked this guy to do sell tickets, <laughs> I mean, cook the popcorn. the popcorn. He had to do yeah. a lot of different things for his team to be successful. And just, you know, when you have to carry that kind of a load and you're not accustomed to doing it, I could see you wearing down, especially playing against a team like Cleveland in the playoffs in the first round. If you remember, they played well against Cleveland. They, they gave Cleveland yes. a scare mainly because of the youngster Oladipo. Mm-hmm. And I think, Harps, you said it best. I think he wore down because he didn't have that consistent second guy. And if we watch the playoffs, and especially with the Cleveland Cavaliers, they threw bodies at him. Mm-hmm. They trapped him off the pick and mm-hmm. roll and made him give the basketball up. So I think for Nate McMillan, also Oladipo, it would be great to see him off the ball a little bit more. But they got to have that second guy that Harps saying to take the pressure off him. So I don't say so much it was him of his play. Mm-hmm. Is this the style of play and the defense he was going against? They weren't going to allow Victor Oladipo to beat them by themselves. So we, by we talked about a second consistent score. What about just having five guys that actually can actually handle the basketball? So you're not well, worried about getting it to him coming up the break every time or him starting the offense out. I mean, the league's going that way anyways. Well, their bench guys do a good job of that. Corey Joseph, for one. Darren Collison, Steve, you talked about mm-hmm. him a little bit earlier. I, I think they have the right mix. And I think Nate, I mean, you talked about Nate being a – sensational coach, especially mm-hmm. on the offensive end, freed those guys up to do what they do best as offensive players. They score a lot of easy baskets because of Collison, Corey Joseph, those guys' ability to get inside and make plays for other people. Thaddeus Young is a big part of what the Pacers are about. And you know, they just have a lot of good players outside of Oladipo, not great outside of him. I have you know, another question, too, just mm-hmm. from your personal experiences. It seems like Oladipo, you know, five years in, now he's figured it all out. Maybe each year he figured out something new. But this season, the leadership really seems to be there. And going into the season with that mentality of, I am going to have a lot of minutes and I am the man. So he flew the whole team to Miami. He wanted them to bond and play golf. He Mm -hmm. wanted the new guys to adjust. And he said, I don't want to look back and think I could have done more. Because he said last year there were moments that he thought that. Is that about the right amount of time for a star to feel really comfortable and be really hitting a stride in his game about five years? You know, uh, it's different for different guys. And I think he just didn't have the opportunity. I thought he came out in Orlando where... He was trying. I don't think he was ready then. It played well, but I really thought he got a chance to watch Russell Westbrook. He wasn't the guy. He had to learn how to play off Russell Westbrook, but I think more importantly, he felt comfortable. Nate, give him a lot of credit. Put him in a position to be successful, and then he transformed his body. He was never out of shape, but he got in phenomenal shape to carry this goal. And I think his confidence level, Harp, went to another level. It did, but I think people equate leadership to the leading score. Mm-hmm. And that's just not the case. I, I think you have to learn to lead. 
And he's on the right track because I think trying to build continuity before the season actually starts for you as a basketball team is really huge. I worry about a lot of people on that team. I'm curious as to what they're going to get off their bench and some of the role players, what their roles are really going to be. But Oladipo, I think he's going to be fine. I think it was a learning experience for him to go through what he went through this past mm -hmm. season. Well, we have someone else we need to talk about, which brings us to point number three. Last season, supposed to be the year that big man Miles Turner really had a breakout year, take the other, the next step in his game. But his scoring, his rebounding, his shot blocking, it all went down. You know, he did make a lot more threes, but his free throw attempts were down from 2016 and 2017. Uh, point number three is, is this the year that Miles Turner finally steps up? And can this team survive if he doesn't? I say no, that they don't survive because I see Miles Turner. I watched him in Dallas quite a bit. He played high school ball down in, in, in Texas. And I saw a guy that was perfect for the NBA, the direction that the NBA is going, a stretch big. That, that's what it's all about. I don't know if it's touches, touches in the right place, exactly what the issue is. But he has a tendency to go away sometime as an offensive weapon. And I don't think the Pacers are good enough if he's not going to average 16, 17 points a game and, I mean, six rebounds for your center, that's never a good thing. No, you're not going to get it done, and I'm with you, Rob. I, I look at it, and like you said it best, Allie, first, your big got to be so aggressive. He got to get more free throw attempts because he has a great mm -hmm. touch. You, that area has to go up for him. I think just overall aggressive, putting your mark on a game. And you know, Harp, sometimes your, your offense is not there, but can you make an impact without your jump shot mm -hmm. going? Can you make an impact without your scoring going? And for a big, as the old school and coaches say, you got to go down there and rebound the basketball. Six is not going to get it for him. He's athletic. He's talented enough. I think he has to get that number close to double figures. And like Harp says, 16 or 17 points for the Indiana Pacers to take that next jump. He has not matched what I expected him to be as a player yet. Still young. I think that's the other thing that you, you got to take in consideration. He's still growing. It takes some guys longer to figure it out than others when you talk about a guy like Miles Turner. He's been doing a lot of yoga, so I'm going to go with the young He has. He's got yes. abs now and everything. Yeah, and really everything. transformed that body. You I've, been, I've, been doing a lot. I've been doing a lot of <laughs> no yoga too hard, but I, I don't have no abs. <laughs> <laughs> well, if, if you don't have any, you know I don't have any. Right? <laughs> Guys, I have one more question when it comes to Miles. You know, I looked up some of the numbers, and Coach McMillan said, I want Miles to play more with Sabonis than with Thaddeus Young. And that's something we really want to start transitioning to this season. But the numbers from last season, you know, they don't tell the same story. When he's with Sabonis, his numbers are way down compared to when he shares the court with Thaddeus. And I know a lot of other factors go into that. But the team also had a negative net rating when they were on the floor together. So how do you see him and Sabonis and, and that chemistry going uh, in the lineup when they're together? Well, you know, I think all great players is obviously there's better fits, Hart. But with his skill set, we see it. Uh, he can shoot the basketball. Sabonis can shoot the basketball. They can play with each other. It still comes down to uh, with, whether with that is young or not, no one's stopping you from rebounds but yourself. I mean, that's where I think Miles Turner, he, and I think he'll get it. I think he'll have a fantastic year playing with Sabonis or not. I think he understood. We talked about it in summer league. I got a chance to interview him that he's ready. And, Harp, you said it best. He put on a little bit of muscle. He has those abs now. And I think just he was young, no <laughs> excuse. But right. as you have more experience, I think he's a smart enough young man to turn around. I think he's going to have a great year. In a lot of ways, they're the same kind of players. Both can stretch the floor. I think Sabonis obviously more physical in the paint and has more of a presence there. A lot of times when you get bigs on the floor at the same time, it bogs down the, the whole floor. The spacing right. is bad, and those guys are stretch big. So you just don't get the kind of rhythm shots that, that you're accustomed to when you're on the floor with two bigs a lot of times. So I'm, I'm writing this down for him for Miles Turner. Oh, <laughs> my pen broke. Jumper, <laughs> abs, perimeter defense rebounding, and we got more for you after the break on how he can be better at the pick and pop. <laughs> hey, everybody. The Pacers added veterans Tyreek Evans and Doug McDermott to help take some of that scoring load off of Oladipo. And their first round pick, Aaron Holiday, impressed during the Vegas Summer League. The rest of the major players return, including underrated point guard Darren Collison. We've moved over now to the court, and you guys have some good ideas about the pick and pop when it comes to Miles Turner. What are you thinking? 
Well, I'm going to let Derek Harper start off with Well, this. pick and pop, pick and roll, whatever you want to do. It mm-hmm. depends on the two players. But I think the key when you start talking about pick and roll basketball, I, I think it's important that both guys are offensive-minded guys. Take, for example, a guy like Oladipo. You put him in the pick and roll with a guy like Miles Turner. Mm-hmm. Miles is a great pick and pop guy, but I think you want to make the point that if he could get into more of a, a rhythm pick and roll, mixing it up, as far as the pick and roll is concerned, yeah, he'll Arp, be I'm better. Have, I'm gonna have you out there where you were very comfortable as yes, a point I guard. Ali, you want to uh, guard hard? You, you, you got to guard. You got to guard hard. But I'll just show you. It's a good time to get me. Have Ali. you seen this my foot speed? Have you seen my foot speed? This is a good time to get me. Ali, don't follow him too hard. And I love Miles Turner. He does a good job because a lot of times you want to get out here and set a pick. Mm-hmm. Harp comes off, and you can oh. see the pick. I set a you pick on Allen. Under. And I, <laughs> I, like that. I, like I like it, I like and it. When you fade here, they do a good job. He throws it on the deep board, Darren Collison, and he knocks down shots, mm-hmm. right? But when you really want to take advantage of Miles Turner's because mm-hmm. of his size, Derek, yeah. and We're his athleticism. Probably best if we go on, on the side pick and roll. Let's go on the side pick yeah. and roll. So you got to go over there. Right, you got to cool. play some defense. I know you got your heels on. I'm feeling nine lazy today. Heels. So I'm going to come set this I'm pick. I'm playing NBA defense right so there. So I no, hit the pick right here. And if I roll and Harp hits me with a nice pass, Miles Turner has to be so aggressive, mm-hmm. I think, in my opinion, because of his athleticism yes, sir. where if he's not dunking this, if he's not scoring, he's getting fouled and he's getting to that free throw line. When you talked about the, how he gets to the free yeah. throw line so less frequently than most people with his size, you're going to miss or make, and you're not yeah. getting to that free throw line hard. And, and having the ability to do both is when you go to a different level in, in the pick and roll situation. If you're just going to be a pick and pop guy, defenses know that. As much scouting that goes on in this league, they know that all you're going to do is that. So if you mix things up, obviously, you're going to be a li- little bit more effective as an offensive player. Well, and I think, too, Miles Turner needs to get more comfortable just triggering you know, the three from right off the screen because, I mean, he, he's a mid-range guy. He's mm-hmm. so much more comfortable there. Mm-hmm. His numbers are better in the mid-range. So you said when you go to the basket, be confident. I think we need to see that same confidence from him on the three-point yeah, line. That'll I, come with more reps. And I right? just think when you have that type of size, when he rolls in a big roll, he's one step, not even one dribble. He's one step into the basket. And usually guys got to run because the spacing right now, Harp, to come be able to take a charge, right. You're going to be too late. You pretty much got to file him. He's a pretty talented kid. I mean, Very it's talented. not beat up mouths. Mm-hmm. It's not what we're trying to do. But for the Pacers to go to that next level, I right. think it's important that he improves. I has a lot of confidence. Some in the of the areas. Yeah, we're saying you favorites. have a lot of potential. We wouldn't be yes. tearing him up like this Absolutely. if we didn't no, think that he's going to going to get him right, though. Let me see about downward dog. <laughs> Although the Pacers ranked only 12th in offensive rating last season, it marked the fourth straight year in which their scoring has gone up and at 107.2 points for 100 possessions. You have to go back to the days of, I mean, Reggie Miller to find the last time Indiana scored so well. Now, the biggest reason for the improved offense, that's easy, Victor Oladipo, we've talked about him all show. The All-Star recently spoke also to Roe Paris via Arena Link. Team just fell short of uh, two two wins short of 50 wins, pushed the eventual Eastern Conference champions to seven games. You guys kind of snuck up on people last season. What are, what is the approach this season as far as how you're going to go into the season? And, and, and can you sneak up on teams again, or are you on everybody's radar now? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I really, I'm really not sure. I really, honestly, I really don't care um, what, what, if guys are sleeping on us or if we're on anybody's radar. Um, we just focus on ourselves and uh, focus on improving. Um, we still feel as though we're not really respected. Um, we don't really feel like uh, um, guys are really concerned about us, which is fine. I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I can see why they might feel that way, seeing as how we only kind of played well one year. So uh, we're looking forward to the challenge of this year and uh, just taking it one day at a time and living in the moment. Uh, we never really focus on the past or focus on the present. We just focus on today. Um, and if we do that one day at a time, the sky's the limit for us. So you guys have Aaron Holiday now, also have Tyreek Evans, two ball handlers. How is that going to help the offense this season? Um, I think it'll help us a lot, um, guys who can make the make plays with the ball. Um, I can play a little off the ball and stuff like that as well. And, um, we'll see how it works, and I'm looking forward to the challenge of, of, of playing on and off the ball. So um, it's going to be great, man. I think those guys will fit just fine and just perfect, and um, I think the sky's the limit for us if we just, like I said, take it one day at a time and keep getting better. 
with LeBron James going to the Western Conference, it appears to be that the NBA Eastern Conference is wide open. What is it going to take for the Indiana Pacers to be on top of the conference at the end of the season? Um, not trying to compare and contrast what we did last year to this year. Um, I think we should, like I said, need to focus on uh, taking it one day at a time like we did last year and uh, just focus on each other um, and focus on improving. Um, it's a season. Uh, so there's going to be some ups and some downs, but we just have to maintain our level of confidence and our level of belief in each other. And if we continue to do that, then I think we'll be just fine. You talked about improving. Now, we all know about your off-season rituals, how you changed things up last postseason, got all ripped up and whatnot. Uh, what about this past off-season? What specifically did you work on, and what can we look forward to seeing in your game this season? Um, I think the biggest thing is just working on my mentality um, and my mental um, and working on that just as much as I work on my body um, and taking my mental to another level. So um, I think I've improved in that category, and I'm looking forward to uh, kind of showcasing it, I guess you can say, uh, this season. Well, we're back on the court. Guys, before we wrap up, he said it himself, his mentality is the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. You can sense the calm and the confidence that he has. He's finally gotten to a point where he, he's really ready to go and feels like the leader all around on this team. I look at Harper and Alley. He doesn't look satisfied. Right. Even though he made his first Not all -star, yeah. um appearance. He was the best player on Indiana Pacers. He scored a lot. He had his best year. But just looking at that interview, it looked like he's not satisfied. He wants more, and I'm not talking about individually. I think he wants more as far as winning, getting to that next chapter for the I, I would Pacers. concur with you on that, Steve. I, it, it, you look at this team. They got better by adding a guy like Tyreek Evans to me as a basketball team. They can score. They like playing together. They defend for the most part as a basketball team. And, you know, you couple those things together. And I think the Pacers, one of those teams that people don't want to see in the first round of a playoff series. Right. They have that toughness. It all starts mm -hmm. with Coach McMillan. Absolutely. So that leads us to the question, are they tough enough? Will they be improved mm -hmm. enough to win more or less than 47 and a half games? I have them harp north of 47. I'm going, I have them ex ex as high as being a third team you know, as far as placed in the Eastern Conference, I have Toronto. I mean, I have Boston, I have Toronto. Then I have the Indiana Pacers. So I'm going there a little bit north. I think it'll be closer to 50 wins. I think they will be too, Steve. I, I like you. You talked about the coaching. That's very important. I, I like the Pacers. A lot of good things about the Pacers, but they have a good mix of young and veteran players that's been there and done that, so to speak. I look for them to jump a little bit in mm -hmm. the Eastern Conference. It's wide open. I'm going more as well, and a lot of people don't realize. 10 out of the 18 guys that were at Media Day this week, they are not guaranteed for contract next season. Oh, so hungry. they got something so to play for. They got oh, something oh, to play for. Hey. And, and we all know. You went right to the money. Right to the money, baby. That's what it's all about once you get to that hungry, level. Hungry. Um, but I also think, you know, that can go one of two ways. You either start playing selfishly to get your numbers up for your contract year, but not this team. McMillan nah, won't allow Nate, that. Nate, Nate, Nate got them right. They're going to be all right. Yep, they got it just right. They'll well, this good. has been fun, you guys. For D. Harper, for Smitty, I'm Allie LaForce, and we'll see you next time.